Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this live webinar. I do believe that this is the formal beginning of the webinar, okay? <coughs> so we will, well, I'll, we are going to wait until Adina, Adinda confirms me that she can, okay, everything's fine, and she is already recording the webinar, and once she says so, we are going to start with today's subject, you know? Okay. <coughs> Yes, really. Okay, sorry. I uh, I will start again with it. Refresh the camera. Okay. Anyway, uh, when when starting when thinking about my webinars, uh, you know that I do rather do technical webinars. I do prefer technical analysis. Uh, before starting this one today, I was thinking it's kind of funny, right? Because we are trading forex, and we know that trading forex technical analysis is anything but a exact science, right? We know there is no way to forecast whatever mayors will do in the upcoming minutes, day, or hours. We have statistics and mathematics, and we are using a long uh, and extensive number of tools that, on contrary, are yes, based on uh, exact science like math, right? To see what happened in the past, Okay, and try to find the probable statistic of that repeating in the future, right? That's all about trading. So, kind of weird to notice that non-exact science is passed in an exact one, okay? Anyway, as I was saying, there's a lot of tools that we can use to try to do this exercise of forecasting the future or forecasting price action, trying to see where mayors are heading, and trying to grab some pace out of that, right? The number of tools are growing day after day. We have new indicators, new expert advisors, new trading systems, advisors, ideas, day after day after day. The fact is that the idea of keeping the technical analysis as simple as, uh, uh, as possible remains to be the preferred option once you uh, pass all the way through all the other indicators. I do believe that when we all start trading, right, uh, we start looking for the famous holy grail, right? We all are, we spend months looking for that perfect tool that will give us the answer of our trading, that will make us rich, that will give us money or whatever we think. The fact is that uh, instead of focusing in choosing a couple of uh, tools, sorry, I was you not know, able to find the one. Instead of focusing and choosing that part, a couple of tools and start testing of those tools, right, and analyze and understand how those tools work and what are they useful for, okay, we spend uh, months jumping from one system to another, to one indicator to another, discarding it when those signals are not profitable without knowing if the system and in the long run is good or not. Anyway, what I'm trying to say just right now is that it's not the tool we choose, right? Uh, again, what's really important here is not the tool we choose. It's the way we use the tool. It's the way we understand the tool works and how we backtest the past and how we understand what the mathematical has been over the past one, two, three, four years, right? Uh, we can talk about that uh, right now if you want. And... Uh, Based on that, calculate the mathematical probabilities of success in the future with that tool in that particular currency pair in that particular time frame. Because, you know, those kind of statistics we can accomplish by studying the past, right? They are not warranted to repeat in the future. However, those statistics vary age. If we are talking about the euro, if we are talking about the pound, if we are talking about the yen, if we are talking about the daily chart, if we are talking about the 15-minute chart, right? They are all, they all change numbers, change the systems that maybe works and give me, I don't know, a 70% successful traders in euro in the daily time frame will give me just 40% in the 15-minute chart. So I had to choose a tool choose the time frame, a currency pair, and start working in the past, right? Anyway, uh, too much of an introduction today. The idea was uh, talking a bit about one of the best tools we have, and those are the moving average, right? 
Uh, I don't. I do believe that, it, as I told you, that simple is better always. Moving over, as you know, that is one of the most common common ways to assess a trend, right? Uh, we know that there is a trend when we have a moving uh, when the moving average has a good slope. Moving average are just trend indicators, so they are not worth to use when market is moving sideways. Yeah, at the end, a trend. Uh, this moving average is just a trend direction indicator that can calculate a simple arithmetic average uh, of prices for a specific period, right? Showing the average value of the price of a currency over a set value date. Uh, as you can see, we are seeing right now an euro dollar twenty euro dollar daily chart. Sorry, and I have plot a twenty simple moving average with the red one. The only thing I plot right now, the fact is that this moving average is one of my favorites. And we are going to start with the bigger picture and go to smaller. But as you can see, uh, all that I have told you just now is resolved in this chart. Yeah, as long as the moving average has a slope, okay, and the price is above, that moving average trend is bullish. When moving average starts turning flat, okay, my pick sideways and it's given me no certain information. When price is below the moving average and the moving average gains the bearish slope, price tends to go lower, right? So this is the first reading I get from a moving average. I will make the chart smaller, right? And you will see that it's pretty common to see that when pair is above, the trend continues rise, and when we turn flat, we see some consolidation, some sideways movements, still we find a new way either up or down, right? But in general, in this daily chart, you can appreciate that as long as price is above moving average, we are bullish, and as long as we are below moving average, we are bearish. This is just a twenty simple one, right? There are several combinations and some there are moving average we can use to trade, okay? So uh, the, the opportunities moving average gave us, right? Uh, this one at least is usually to tell us about the short term trend because we have a 20 periods, right? I have set it to 20. Uh, it's a good idea to mix it, to combine it with a, with a 50 periods one. Usually it's most common use in market, right? Let's do the 50 green, okay? And let's add the larger one <clears throat> in the all time famous 200 simple. Okay, let's do it uh, brown. Okay, so we have the different color sets there. So, uh, why do I plot two different smoking average? You know that when while the 50, the, ten, the 20, sorry, first one is talking about short term. As more time, as longer it's moving average, as uh, more numbers I add to the period I calculate, right? The most longer term I can see in the charts, right? So in this particular case, 100 or 200 moving average, this 200, it's telling me what had happened over the last 200 days, right? So what I'm seeing right now in these euro dollar daily charts, Right, I'm seeing 200 crossing above the 50. Right, I'm seeing 20 also crossing above the 50 for several days before. In general, the, the 200 has a strong bullish slope supporting the trend that we have been seeing developing since the past two months. Right, however, uh, this daily chart and this information I'm seeing right now, uh, it's not useful for intraday tra trade or crosses of moving average in this particular time frame or this particular uh, length, right, are not the ones that are given me the entry signals or trading probabilities. So for that kind of uh, uses, I could use different settings of moving average, right? In fact, what I'm trying to say here is that we can use moving average either to determine a trend and make them work as non support resistance levels or either as a trading strategy when the, we have seen crossing them. However, when we are talking about daily or so long-term charts, uh, uh, a cross of moving average, uh, it will give me the signal quite late before the trend is already started, right? So I don't like this kind of setting or this kind of tool to try to determine where a trend is starting or, or ready to reverse or to find a bottom or, uh, or a top, right? Okay, do you have any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, Okay, 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, since Adrian has a question, no other questions? Okay, anyway, we will continue. Matt will answer you, Adrian. <laughs> Let me know what you need. Anyway, I will be today on the weekly, uh, the daily opening later today, so <laughs> we can, we can, I can help you there. Anyway, back to what we are looking at right now. I will change my charts and I will turn to the dollar Japanese chain one hour chart to talk about the trading strategy and the short term trade combination. We can set different combinations of moving average to trade in the shorter term. I usually plot uh, smaller ones, right? Tend to choose one at the price follower, meaning two, three, five periods, not much more than that. Uh, that it's usually a non moving average because usually following price action, the current channel, but it's telling me the relationship in between that moving average and the other one I use to trade, right? Uh, the idea of using a very short one uh, is to make the system a bit more visual, right? Anyway, and regarding dollar Japan chains and trade combinations of moving average, there is a lot of ways to use moving average uh, for trading, okay? But and usually, people talk about a cat to moving average. However, I do rather when I trade short term, and we are talking about a one hour chart, 30 minutes or four hours even, I rather use three moving average. Say. In this particular case, I will plot three different moving average, short term ones, right? And so we can all see what I'm talking about. I will plot four, four periods, one as I was saying, uh, different colors. Okay. Uh, there, not to pay. Sorry, I will change the color. Anyway, as I was saying, this one is usually a flight follower, right? Really, uh, and the idea is to make the system a bit more visual. So I plotted, I plotted a, a full one. Uh, now we are going to add a new a nine periods moving average. Let's make it a bit more blue. Okay, and let's add. And another one, last one, and an 18. Okay, and let's make it a bit darker. <laughs> oh, there we are. Okay, there are, we have the three moving average. That's what I tend to say when I trade short term <coughs> in different crosses, of course. And what I'm trying to say here yeah, is that this four, nine, 18 periods combination is not just, uh, it's not, uh, it has not to be the one you choose. You have to test different combinations, you can play with this. That's the most amazing thing, of course. Besides, I forgot to add this at the beginning of the webinar. Keep in mind that uh, this is a MetaTrader, uh, a UK time zone MetaTrader, right? So the signals that you can see in my charts or the combinations or the process that you can see in this chart, right? Uh, if you use a time zone that's not United Kingdom, could be quite different, right? So please, Test your systems before uh, before applying them. Live right, despite whatever you see in this webinar, mine or whoever. Okay. Anyway, the idea of trading with this moving average, with a combination, very short one and two others, right? Is that once? Uh, let's see if we have a clear example. I will remove this and make the chart a bit smaller. Okay. The idea in here is that once the the price follower, the four periods one. Cutting the first one, the next uh, moving average, the nine periods one, it's giving me a warning of a probable reversal in the trend, right? Probable bottom, more after this almost vertical stance moving average. The break above the, the same moving average, the price follower one, about the largest one, above 18, that's the final warning of the market, uh, almost ready to change the trend. Now, when the 9 1 cross 18, that's the final confirmation that the trend is ready to go and extend to the upside. I will stay inside this trade, okay, until both moving average, the shortest one, cut back down the larger one, okay? This is my exit point. This is my exit warning. If we're on contrary, I don't know, maybe in this particular case that market is sideways, right? And moving average loss. Same and lost value because they are not more 
work in a value being indicators in this particular case, right? I need a trend to trade moving average, right? Let's say that we get into the market and here when we have this confirmation on this level, right? See when the price cap is. I'm almost at my entry point, right? Not letting me lose a lot of money. But anyway, it's a failure entry. I have to leave my train once the moving average cat each other in the contrarian direction. That's what I'm pointing here. No matter what system you are using or what combination of moving average, or even if you're using two, three, or four moving average. I never use no one use four. I don't believe that. <laughs> two or three is the most you can use. Okay? However, that will be your exit point. When the contrarian signal you get in uh, you get the contrarian signal. Right? Why? Because you lost the conditions that gave you an inside market uh, advice. Right? That you lost the conditions that let you get into the market, so you are out. No matter if you're winning 100 or losing 20 or losing one, the fact is that when an indicator, when you see a signal in the time frame, it should develop quite softly, right, and quite quickly. And as long as price remains above the moving averages, the, the medium one and the wide space is the space in between moving average keeps widening okay now it's telling you that there's a good chance of an upside continuation of a trend continuation in this particular case right the the four periods one catch below the 90 that's give me a warning there's a good chance the market will prevail here however price uh recovered the upside and the light the sky blue sorry one regained the upside cutting the medium one that tell me, okay, you're okay with your trade. But once both moving average lose below the chin, okay, that's my exit point, right? If I'm going to take a trade in this particular trading conditions, right? And I told you that confirmation will come around this level, right? 8077 price lost 20 pips. Okay, that was what my maximum drawdown in the cross, okay, so in one hour charts, that would be a logical stop. You know, everyone always asks me, where do I set my stops or how do I set my stops with a trading strategy? The fact is that for any possible trading strategy, no matter what combination of indicators you're using, right, I will go for the latest lows. I will go for static support or resistance level, not that far away from current price, and I will place my stop loss just below that level, right? Just below that level. That's where I have to place myself. However, I also consider the time frame I'm trading. If I'm working in a one hour time frame with dollar chip exchange that lately, I don't know, moves average 80 pips per day, right? <coughs> if I'm going for, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 pips, right? My stop won't be 100 pips, right? It's not logical. Again, the risk reward value will be logical and should depend on the time frame and the pair I'm trading. If I'm trading a pair with a short intraday range like dollar Japanese yen that moves in between 80, maybe 100 pips a day when we are lucky, right? Uh, the fact is that my stop should not be larger than 30 pips, okay? If I'm trading pound that has a uh, a wider range that moves uh, 150 pips a day easily, then I could trade with a larger stop, right? I could use maybe 40, 50 pips in my stop loss. But my winning, my signal should be so good that my winning should overcome that price, right? It should give me, my reward radio should be higher or at least one. One is similar. I could not risk 50 pips to go for 10, right? And I can risk 50 to go for 50, 60, 80, okay? But I can risk 50 pips to grab 10 from the market because I'm seeing a probable 10 pips rise, right? That's what I'm trying to say. We need to be logical. On the contrary, if we are, uh, that goes for this one hour charts, right? But if I'm trading daily, right? And I said, uh, I don't know, uh, pound has a bullish signal in the daily charts, right? I will be go for, I don't know, maybe 400 or 500 pips, right? That will be probably my target. 400 pips, so my stop should be accordingly. I cannot trade that with a 20 pip stop loss, right? So the logical is there, okay? Time zones, uh, sorry, time traded, chart traded, right? And, and, uh, wide and daily range of the currency I'm trading and probable target, okay? That's where I caught it. Anyway, 
trading with moving average is insane here. This example uh, I, I plotted in here with the 4, 9, 18 periods one. The fact is that there are a lot of combinations you can use uh, and test. 9, 13, 34 is another one. It's almost very reliable one, both as, as is this one. But when it, it, it comes to, to trade with uh, this cross of moving average, this uh, moving average crosses, right? The idea is to understand that what's interesting here is the slope of a moving average. I know you may say there's a lot of fake signals in the middle, and yeah, there's a good chance of that. Okay, so how do we filter that uh, fake signal? How do we know when we have a fake signal uh, or the market all of a sudden comes from, I don't know, maybe a bearish movement, is aiming higher, and we see then sideways. The fact is that after plotting the moving average in our charts, it's a, uh, it's usually a, a, a good idea to consider that bullish or bearish crosses, of course, when the short period of moving average uh, crosses the longest one. That will be my confirmation, right? And, for example, in this particular case, we have a, a fake movement, right? But this was probably some intervention or some rumor about that. So that kind of moment, I should discard and take a step side and wait. I know that maybe that's the worst part of trading, right? Waiting for the, 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 <laughs> the, the right moment to get into the market. However, what I was trying to say it again, sorry, I get lost, the filter. The, the, Perfect filter uh, for moving average crosses trading, right? Uh, use uh, use uh, volume, market volume, right, uh, to confirm that crossovers. You know that conventional wisdom says that uh, moves occurring uh, on large volume have more significance than moves occurring over low volumes markets. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you add a volume indicator to your charts, right? or uh, analyze volume as I do, and I will explain you right now, okay? Uh, that would be the filter you need, okay? That would be the filter. Uh, how do I take a look at volume? Okay, I will enlarge the chart, right? And what I'm trying to say, to talk say about volume is that uh, you can add an indicator. You can add a volume indicator, but what that indicator will be showing you. It will show you volume traded in the broker you are trading with, right? If your charts belong to your broker and you have any kind of volume indicator, it will show you volume traded with that broker. That's not that's not the complete volume traded across the board. The world, sorry, you don't know how much more or how much less uh, the rest of the world is trading. So this idea of this way to terminate volume without indicator is to measure the length of the candles, right? Uh, I will go back to euro, or run the euro, okay? And one hour charts, sorry. Okay, hope you see it, okay? Uh, right, so if I take a look at this chart, what do I see? I do see, and there's one, an historical one, right? That an average candle, right? Euro moves in between 20 or 30 pips an hour. Average candle. 30 pips an hour, let's say, right? See what happens when we have candles double or triple that 20 or 30 pips, right? When we have this, for example, starting here, average candles, right? And we have this strong cell to downside that is double those 20 to 30, 20 pips, I would say, and that's telling me that the volume is increasing really to downside, right? So that's how I measure volume. I look for candles, candles that are two or three times the length, okay, of the usual average in that time frame. Uh, it's more visual, more simple, uh, and more easy to read. And anyway, I will interrupt myself. Okay. And to here. Okay, we have a lot of questions. Okay. Okay. Let's start with, uh, with those, these questions. Okay. Uh, FX3, uh, Mo, you talk about, okay, that's the one. Okay, private messengers for Adrian. Boyki, hi, Ben. Have you ever tried trading naked? Uh, yeah, Boyki, I have did, I have do that. I, in fact, I was talking to Maud about that. Uh, we made a seminar, a webinar about that back in 2006 or 2007, 
I am looking for material. I as I always <laughs> keep all the old stuff right <laughs> uh, in my computer. So I will prepare one about that for next uh, next <laughs> next uh, next English webinar. Okay, yeah, and try and really uh, trading at home. One of the advantages of trading at home is that. You can wear whatever you want when you trade, right? <laughs> as long as you don't turn the camera on. <laughs> anyway, Jess. Hi, Bal. So if you do not particularly like using the moon Irish for your entry, mm, what do you, which suggest is most newest thing to use moon Irish? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, meaning I don't say that I don't use them for my entries. Not in the bigger time frames. Not uh, not in the bigger time frames, I mean, and not those long moving average. That's what... Uh, I use this more once I have plotted right now in knowledge of intention because if you use 100 or 200 or 50 or such long extreme period, right? <laughs> uh, uh, if you use those uh, large moving out rushes, uh, you will get the cross that's telling you that where the trend is heading, but you will get it quite late, right? Uh, I don't know, if we have an example. Let's take a chart. Give me a second one uh, while I prepare a new chart. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, what I mean is that you don't, you can use those large moving average for intraday or short term trading or not even longer term trading. I don't believe that if you want to trade the dailies, even the dailies, you should use uh, at least, sorry, uh, at least a uh, shorter ones like 10 20 combination, not 200, no 100. Uh, okay, give me a second. I'm preparing the, the chart. Uh, okay, here we are. Okay, uh, I'm careful with summer. It's summer in here. It's coming to summer. Okay, this is the dollar Swiss franc uh, chart, right? I will add uh, a couple of moving average. Okay, a 100 simple one. Let's do it yellow. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, let's add a 200, right? A simple one, let's do it green, 200 and 100, okay? So, if I'm going to trade in the daily with this large moving average, where, see where they have the cross, right? Cross in here, right? Really, okay, the rally extended 400 more bits, but really, you know, it's not even me a good. Signal, right, for trading. That's what I'm trying to say. We need to use short term for trading. We can talk about trend, but not about signals. Besides, this, 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 the moving average did not take this bottom, right, that we have detected in a lot of ways in the market. That's why we have several tools. Okay? And it's not advising me that this is changing. Maybe they will cut each other back to the upside. I don't know, about 1.7, right? So it's way far. Far away, and once we reach that area, we could reach anyone, maybe 117, right? But that's so much to say. Okay, anyway, I did not detect this bottom with the moving average. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, not that I don't like trading with them. Okay, in fact, I do like trading with them. Adrian, I don't love, uh, I don't love crossovers, but love bounce from moving average as support as resistance. Yeah, of course, that's another way to use it as a portion of the distance of, that's what I was talking about right now. And yeah, I do trade with real money. Imagine that at this point of my life, not trading with real money. <laughs> I have come to trade with real money long already. Uh, coming to my charts, right? For example, this is the charts I use to daily trade. I don't want to show all this mess. I have usually in here, but I do understand it, but that's not me. Everyone does, but if you take a look at my charts, you will see that in almost any European crosses against the dollar, I have this 200 exponential moving average that tends to act as a very strong dynamic support of the system level, right? Uh, and that's the other way to use the moving average. Use them as supports of resistance areas, right? Uh, the idea is that once the price is above that moving average, again, we are bullish. And if we are down below that, the price is bearish. Uh, but the most useful uh, way to, to use also the 20 simple moving average, and the one I do like a lot, okay, comes in here with our friend Pound. 
In particular, the pound in the four-hour charts, you will find out that the pound tends to respect the moving average a lot as dynamic supports or resistance level. Even in the hourly chart today, the pair has been bouncing in the moving average. But once it's broken at once, we had a kind of opening below the moving average about that. So good bearish signal, uh, along with momentum, right, indicator that I used to swim through that. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that there are pairs that tend to respect more moving average, certain moving average than adults, right? For example, pound dollar is a cross that usually respects a lot the 20 simple ones. It's a lot. In the daily chart, you will see that no matter where it is, right, uh, fear always retreats from that late level daily base. And it's the best gap we have. Usually retreats. Of course, at some point, at any support or resistance level, it gets broken, right? As all support and resistance area. But uh, when we are closer uh, to the moving average, it's very common to see pound reaching that moving average, bouncing, and then, well, bounce will define whether if the pair is going to break it later or not. Because I usually follow, when I follow a bounce from a moving average, it's the, the length of the bounce, right? It's, 90% of the time, price will bounce from the moving average, right? However, if the bounce is limited and we remain close to that moving average in the 20, 30 pips range <laughs> near that moving average, right, that suggests there's a good chance of breaking in the moving average. However, if the bounce is larger in the daily chart of bounce, maybe more than 50 pips, okay, that's telling me that the support is still alive and there's a good chance that pair will recover its previous trend, right? Uh, and that 20 simple moving average work as worth as better as with pound and with Australian dollar, right? In the daily or in the four hour charts, okay, the Australian dollar tends to reach the moving average and has its rally bounce from the moving average in the daily and in the four hour charts. Of course, again, a moving average is valid when it has a slope, right? When the moving average is flat, okay? So we have this go on up and down, up and down with no real angle, right? The, the validity of the moving average is lower because it's a trend indicator meant for trends, right? Pair has been bullish and the moving average has been acting as support, okay? And he's been guiding the movement to this point when the, the pair reached parity and things change, right? We have no more bullish slope. The moving average is sideways but heading lower so uh and tell me there's a probable top in here so i need to break the support right in the, the this particular cross to talk about the downside corrective movement and the support has been this 1960s price zone and we have the 200 exponential on those levels so i will be looking this particular cross can open in below that uh 200 exponential if ever happens of course we don't know what will really happen or if the pair is going to approach to that level, but that will be a warning that the price will continue to downside, right? And probably a big one. So I will be looking for that. I'm always looking for that kind of stuff, right? Uh, anyway, those 200 exponentials I tend to use, I don't like it on Japanese chain, for example, or chain crosses, right? I don't follow them in Japanese chain crosses. I'd rather use 100 and 200 simple ones in here, you know, chain crosses, because I don't like it. Uh, uh, exponential moving aberrations there. Still, it's a personal choice and personal testing. As I was saying uh, to you, the, the, the question here is not the tool we use, right? It's how we learn to use it. Anyway, keep on checking questions. Okay. <coughs> uh, yeah. Okay, no more questions? No more comments? Okay. If not, uh, I will take a look at that and other things, but if you have questions, feel free to ask them, right? Uh, Anyway, uh, give me a second. I will refresh the camera and put it up in our chat. Anyway, uh, just one second, okay? Um, let's start with our friend, the CBP, right? Most of all, the trading strategies. Uh, uh, sorry, I do believe that uh, uh, Jess says, uh, uh, what would you, I suggest you to use since most newest things to use moving average? What I suggest you to use really is a combination of any trend indicator and any um, cyclic indicator, right? Like stochastic or commodity channel inner, relative strength index, not so much, 
But I, I would re recommend you to use a combination of that. Uh, as I said, I have been doing webinars well, since 2006, I do believe in here. So there's a lot of material uh, <laughs> recorded. And if I choose to date to date about talking about this moving average, it's because I do believe that played with moving average. Uh, it's another interesting thing, uh, another interesting tool that we could use to success in trading, okay? Uh, anyway, uh, let's give me a second, sorry. I will place the camera on. Okay, this is a pound dollar for our chart. And to an example, we are going to set another combination of moving average, right? Uh, the standard period for short-term trading, okay, will be a couple of exponentials, I like 12 and 26. Uh, if you pay attention, those 12 and 26, are the same number you have inside MACD. All the numbers have uh, those, the, the, all the numbers the people that uh, have developed this indicator have a meaning, right? Uh, and we should not resist using them. We should not regret using those indicators, right? <laughs> those numbers had a meaning, and I do love them, and I do prefer use those kind of numbers, 14, 20, 12, 26, and Fibonacci numbers to set moving average something. Uh, the fact is that when we are talking about larger ones, talking about 200 or 233, that is a Fibonacci number, it makes no real difference, okay? But when you're trading with small time frames or short-term moving average, right, is a combination uh, of shorter numbers and use FIBO numbers or classical numbers set by the ones that develop indicators. That will be one uh, tip for trading. Anyway, uh, as you can see, these are both simple moving average, not exponential, 12 and 26, right? Um, you can see that we have buying signals and setting signals pretty valid when we have a slope in the moving average. The golden catch, what we call golden catch moving average, are these ones, right? When the shorter one has a strong uh, vertical stance, right? When I have two moving average running like this parallel, right? Uh, and I have a catch in here, right? I'm getting my selling signal pretty late, in fact, right? So it's not the most accurate way. So what I do like is this. This vertical cut, this white net, white in between both moving average, that's what I'm looking for, right? This distance in between both moving average and the vertical stance. I have the cat with this candle opening, right? So I'm not that late to get into the trade. And in this particular case, that I'm catching just the last 30 pips move, okay? That's the difference. That's why I'm telling why you, you need to to take a chair, sit in here, and start making back testing and watching the charts, right? Besides, see what's going on as long as the widest, uh, the, the, the distance in between both in the average points, the, the trend remains uh, good, okay? Anyway, that's what we need to do there, right? In this particular case, if this would be my entry point, right? My stop will be just above this high. Okay, just above those highs. And of course, once the pair starts to change trends and we regain levels above the shorter one, the 12, I will take my profits out to the table. I won't be waiting. In fact, the, the fact is that this kind of rally of 240, 250 pips, pretty common to see in here. Uh, I usually grab the first 50, 60 pips and move away because I don't like to stay inside the market, okay? Me, particularly me. I like that. I like to take my gains out, out, out of the table and get ready for another trade. That's me. That does not mean you cannot buy all the movement. However, again, when the price is above the shorter one, you are losing the entry to market conditions. So you must close your trade and anyway, have a good profit, right? Again, the slope is what you need to take and the back testing. Start looking at the past of your charts. See how much drawdown you have once you enter. Okay? See the confirmation. But this is just the combination of moving average. The fact is that we, you can play around with all this uh, moving average 
okay, with the time periods they mean, and you will be able to get them with a rush to fit the price data of a given market, of a given currency more closely, right? You can start playing like I did with these numbers and change 12 for 10, 12 for 14, 26 for, I don't know, 28, or whatever combinations you like. That's what I'm trying to say here. It's not the tool, it's us who, in which the, the Forex success depends on, okay? Anyway, um, okay, we have one more question uh, from Philip. So I will answer that. Uh, and I believe that that will be it if you don't have any more questions. Uh, how could we use a higher time frame to filter trades? What indicators work best on the higher trend time frame and on the entry time frame? That's a good question. Okay. What I tend to do is, is uh, as you can see in my charts, I will plot them again and I will give you just one example. Okay. Uh, for our friend, pound, dollar. Okay, what I tend to do, okay, when I start trading is take a look at the four hour charts, right? The four hour charts, I have a momentum and a commodity channel index. I don't like relative strength index, but as I told you, a trend indicator and a psychic one, right? What I see here is that the trend was bullish, okay, when I wake up today, that indicator was exhausted to the upside. When I wake up today, at the beginning of my day, it indicators where in here and in here, heading lower after this strong high, right? So we have probable double growth in here, but let's see what happens and how it develops. Anyway, what I'm seeing is that bullish trend is getting exhausted, right? So that's the first thing I notice in here. Still, the bullish trend is strong because the 20 simple point is just heading higher, right? And it's not losing strength. So in general, I would say that pound was bullish, but losing strength. So when I get into the smaller time frames, I will favor the signals to downside that I get from the indicator, okay? That will I will try to find bigger. That's how I filter my trades, usually, okay? Uh, try to set in the four-hour charts the trend and the support and resistance area. I do love setting my support and resistance area in the four-hour charts. I do it periodically. And once support or resistance gives up, I try to favor smaller uh, time frames entries in that uh, direction and in the middle of those resistance and support areas. But that's just me. Anyway, okay, uh, okay, uh, let's tell uh, the moderator to send me a private message. So we have to finish the session right now. Sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> I, I like to talk. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, thanks all and thanks for being here and hope to see you back today later, okay, in the daily wrap-up webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.